So let's talk all things population. Let's first talk about the council that you've been appointed to. What are you looking forward to? What is actually going to get done here? I'm excited that we'll have a chance to dive deep into population trends, not only in Michigan, but across the country, as we look to figuring out solutions to help put us on the map for uh, being one of the best places to live, grow, grow a family, and, uh, and have a job and work here. We've got fantastic, uh, you know, features for people to, uh, you know, have recreation and, and love being here and work here. But we need more people to know that that is a story that Michigan has to tell. Where is that disconnect, right? Because there was also a report that said Michigan is uh, second only behind West Virginia when it comes to population growth. I think as a young person and knowing a lot of my friends who have moved out of state or even out of the area that I grew up in, in Downriver, people are looking for places where you have a lot of activity, where you can walk to coffee shops or museums or uh, art shows and a place that you can feel like you're part of a community. And I think we need to go back to more of those types of communities. If you look at Michigan and the places that are growing, it's places like Traverse City mm -hmm. or Ann Arbor or places like Royal Oak in Oakland County. And those are walkable, livable communities that people are attracted to based on the experience that they have there. And so we need more of that across the state. So those those places that you just named also happen to be, you know, uh, very wealthy mm -hmm. <laughs> areas. Talk to me a little bit about how when we're talking about growing population uh, that fits in with inclusivity for mm -hmm. all and so that everyone can make a home in these, you know, areas that can yeah. be tough to, to find housing, affordable living. And that's actually a key piece that was brought up in our first population council meeting is that we want to ensure that any of the data that we are looking at and analyzing is really inclusive of every experience of all of our Michiganders. And so when we're talking about communities of color, some of that data is not always aggregated in a way that is uh, T telling the full story, let's, let's put it that way, where we're talking about Latino communities or black communities or any of our other diverse, beautiful uh, members of, of Michigan, we wanna ensure that every piece of the data is accurate and that we are inclusive for all of those voices. So help me understand, so it's like this, this younger generation that we need to get you know, to stay or that we want to have them stay. Meantime, we sort of have a council or folks in government saying here's what we need to do tend to be older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like how will the council or whoever is making some of these decisions make sure to listen to the younger generation? This is how I've lived my life, right, in politics. I'm one of the younger people always in the room and I think that there are those who are eager to listen to people like me and others who are of my generation wanting to see what is it that I'm choosing about Michigan? That Why do I want to be here? And for me it's about making sure that we have a place that is close to home that I have a beautiful family nearby, that we've got wonderful places to live that are affordable, and that we do have these beautiful natural resources across Michigan, whether it's Lake Erie or the Detroit River. You are chair of the uh, pre-K through 12 education budget in the, the Senate. Talk to me a little bit about the conversations that you wanna make sure are had at that table. When we're talking about education, it has to be pre-K through post-secondary. And so uh, we've gotta talk about how do we get the best resources in front of our kids as early as possible. And so we're talking about literally right from birth. And so whether it's the Dolly Parton Imagination Library and getting more books in the hands of families, which is something that we added in our school budget for more Michigan students to take advantage of, uh, all the way through, what is that post-secondary credential, whether it's a trade school or a two-year community college or a four-year university, all of those options have to be on the table for conversation. Growing Michigan's population has been on the top of politicians, lawmakers, academics, economists' minds for decades here in Michigan. How will this council, do you think, be different this time than, than previous conversations, iterations, idea making? I think for a lot of the conversation previously, it's always been about how do we harken back to the past? Mm. And because we have so many people who came to Michigan for a specific purpose. My family is one of them. My dad's an immigrant from Malta. Him and his family came to the US in the 1960s with the hope of the American dream and, and a good manufacturing job. On my mom's side, Mexican Americans who came from Texas all the way to Detroit, again, with the hope of manufacturing. But that was you know, 60, 70 years ago for my, my mom's side and you know, 50 years ago for my dad's side. And that type of Michigan doesn't exist in the same way. But how can we become a place that is still a beacon of hope for the future? It's about climate. It's about our, our environment. We are going to be the place that because of the lack of action at the national and worldwide level for climate change, Michigan is the place where you can seek refuge in the future. You know, we do have our, our moments of really high heat, but we're not sitting in 120 degrees like in Arizona. There's gonna be a point 
pretty soon where people are starting to realize that we want to live in a place that is bearable and beautiful all at the same time. So affordable living, transportation, which is always top of mind here in Michigan, education. Um, what will success look like? Are there going to be metrics? Like how will you know yes. <laughs> that this that is we've working? Met the goal? Right, ex other than maybe, you know, a population of 11 million. Yeah. I mean, what does that look like? So I do think we need to hit a specific target, whether that is a specific number mm -hmm. that we're hoping to be at by 2050 or a specific growth number. Mm -hmm. One of those two things is really critical because we do need to have a North Star. But the other piece is what are the other metrics along the way? And so if you're going to hit a certain population, whether it's 11 million, 12 million by a certain number, what are the steps along the way that we need to be taking together? Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican in this legislature, we need to be united in that purpose. And that's something I hope we can come out of this council with is that this is the vision for Michigan. It's not a vision for the governor or for the legislature or for this one um, body of, of people. It's literally how can we put all of our partisan politics aside and say, for Michigan to thrive, we must do this together and stick on that path for the next 10 or 15 years. Let's talk a little bit about education. The governor just recently announced an entire new department. Yes. Uh, it will go into effect in December. Talk to me a little bit about my leap. I think for this new department that the governor is creating, it's again back to that principle of we need to be focused on a goal as a state and we need to all be working towards that direction. And so with her new initiative with MyLeap, I think it's going to be you know, very important that we again focus on those early learners as well as those who are looking to go right into the economy and to get a job. And we do know that those who've been working in the Department of Education, I've heard it over and over again during this budget process, they need more staff, they need more support. And so if we can figure out ways to balance that workload, I think this new department's really gonna help. So you just mentioned the Department of Education. So these are going to be two separate departments mm -hmm. and there's been some consternation mm -hmm. from uh, some folks who are part of uh, the Department of Education, including the state superintendent, uh, Michael Rice, uh, the, the education board members actually asking for an opinion mm -hmm. from the state attorney general, Dana Nessel, about the constitutionality of this new department. Um, is it not great? that it's already, you know, with it with its uh, announcement that there's already a little controversy surrounding whether it's um, something that even Democrats are going to back. I think that there's always going to be uh, resistance to change, mm -hmm. no matter whether it's coming from a Democratic administration or a Republican administration. But this one component around education, no matter the party of the governor, there has not been an ability for the governor to really lead in a direction unless they do some systemic departmental changes. And that's one way that I know that Governor Whitmer is trying to lead in this space. She has the constitutional authority to create her own departments and to reorganize departments as well. I'm, I, I'm backing it. I think a lot of legislators are backing it too because we do see the benefit of working with a department that is focused on some of these early and post uh, opportunities for education. Let's think about 2033. Uh, write me a headline. <laughs> if Michigan is a successful state uh, when it comes to population growth and particularly your passion, which is education. The headline that I'd like to see is that Michigan is a top 10 state for growth and that we are in a top 10 state for education across the country. When we look at some of the things that we're investing in right now, we are trying to plant the seeds for future opportunities, not only for our students, but for our educators as well. If we can be the place for an education workforce, it's gonna set us up for so many opportunities for success. Can we do it? I think we can. We've got some really important investments in the education workforce that we just passed in this budget. We've got record per pupil uh, amounts going out to our, every student across Michigan. And we're also investing in equity. We're spending $200 million in additional resources for our at-risk uh, students and that's also being added in with a new opportunity index so that if you are in a high concentration poverty district you're going to get more money per pupil than those that don't have those exact needs that I think is going to level the playing field balance out some of these inequities in our system and actually help us address these challenges hopefully for that 2033 headline to say come to Michigan be the place that you want to raise your family be the place that you want to learn and grow and work and that is something that I think we can all be proud of watch one Detroit Thursday at 7.30 p.m. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.